the profitability of the aviation sector at a time when frequent flyers and the flying public is lamenting a hike in airfares where domestic airfare tickets are reportedly even higher than some regional tickets. Take for instance, the air ticket between Lagos to Accra is reportedly cheaper than air tickets between Lagos to Abuja. Now joining us on the program this morning to further expand the scope of this conversation is Mr. Tunji Oke Tumbi. He is a former Secretary General of the Nigerian Safety Investigation Bureau. Uh, uh, um, I was uh, the general manager of yeah. public affairs for, for the Nigerian Safety Investigation Bureau. Thanks for that yeah. correction <clears throat> as well. Yeah. Nice to have you in our studios. You're welcome. Now, I, in my intro, I highlighted one of the prominent concerns when you talk to persons about the aviation industry mm -hmm. in Nigeria now. Mm -hmm. The first thing any Nigerian would tell you is, ah, etiquettes are very high. Yeah. Many Nigerians have looked at it from two angles. We have Dangote Refinery churning out Jet A1 fuel. But if we have local refinery, it should also mean that uh, Jet A1 fuel would be available and air ticket prices should be a little bit lower. But we see an increase in demand for flights within the country, which has even made mm -hmm. the price higher than some regional ticket fares. Can you further shed light on this development? Well, the cost of a product actually has, uh, is invariably tied to uh, the cost of production. And um, the airlines are also finding it very difficult, you know, to, you know, <laughs> keep track of the cost of uh, uh, production. Let me put it that way. Uh, the, you talk about uh, Jet A1, for example. Uh, if even if Jet Dangote is uh, pumping uh, Jet A1 out, at what cost? How? Uh, what is the difference between the price at which we are buying it before and at which we uh, Dangote uh, is selling it? However, uh, that is not the only thing that uh, makes up for uh, the cost of uh, operating an, an aircraft. Uh, the spare parts are there. Maintenance. Maintenance. And that maintenance is done with foreign exchange. And you know how the Naira plummeted from uh, probably 800 Naira to 1,500 Naira. And so that one affects the cost of operation. The insurance is done with foreign exchange. So that's another thing. Virtually all the uh, except labor, virtually all other things are done. All transactions, all transactions emission. are in dollars. So, um, they are, I think they are they are, they are tethers end in the sense that um, if they increase airfare beyond the point, they will not get passenger at all. So, they are trying to cope too. When, when do we get to that point? Because right now, a single uh, trip ticket is almost in the average of 150,000 naira to 200 among some airlines sampled in our reports. 150,000 naira is um, $100 when you look at it. Um, if you if you if you're able to get a ticket for $100 in America, that's cheap. Yeah, you can get lower in some instances, but for 150,000 naira, you can if you are looking at Nigerian economy, okay, that's a very uh, big uh, amount of money. Considering our minimum wage. Yes, much. but you have to think back again and know that these guys are operating with dollars. They are buying their spares with dollars. They are doing their maintenance with dollars. They are doing their insurance with dollars. They are leasing their aircraft with dollars, and some of them are even paying the uh, expatriate uh, at a uh, dollar rate. So. I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, advocate, advocate, for yeah, advocate for them, but I'm just trying to let you see the two sides. But I know, yeah, even in the aviation industry, we cry against um, high airfares. We tell the airlines, no, you cannot increase. No, you cannot. But when we look at it, uh, they have to survive first. If they cannot survive, and some of them have gone under. They have gone under because they could, they could not cope. So it is a, it's a very serious uh, situation that they have found themselves. We'll come back to more challenges of yeah. the aviation sector. Yeah. But so we balance the conversation. Yeah. Let's also talk about some gains. Prior to the coming on board of the current administration, yes. Nigeria owed quite a backlog 
entrapped yeah. foreign exchange mm -hmm. earnings. Yeah. Now, the president, President Bola Metinibu, mm -hmm. through the CBN governor, yeah. Uliye Mikadoza, has been able to repatriate a huge chunk of this yeah, FX and thereby yeah. strengthening relationships mm -hmm. between yeah. some of these airlines we see reopening routes, routes to Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how important is this? Well, it's very important because, one, uh, it will inspire confidence in the other, in the trading partners. Anywhere uh, a, a, an airline is coming from a country to your country, it's it facilitates a uh, trade, you know, between the two countries. So that 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 one is a a good economic uh, factor. Now, again, a lot of uh, these airlines were losing confidence in Nigeria because they could not repatriate their money. If you go to a country, you it's a part of the bilateral air service agreement that whatever money I make in your country, I should be able to freely repatriate them back. But then. The country also, as a suffering nation, has the right to manage its own economy and make sure that it doesn't run into trouble. In line with our foreign reserves. Yes. So, the, we, you have to balance the two. So, I think the government could not uh, repatriate, uh, I mean, they could not allow the island to repatriate money because of these uh, economic issues. And later on, perhaps, uh, the foreign reserves was... Uh, you know, it had appreciated. Appreciating. So they also decided to clear that. And they, I, I think they have done well because the implication of not doing that was that the airline increased the airfare. So to go to London, for example, you have to be thinking about 2 million naira. That's outrageous. And so they did that because they saw, because of the uh, volatile environment, that they could not predict what is going to happen to their money. They cannot predict the value of Naira as at the time they want to repatriate the, 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 their earnings. So that will give them this kind of uh, feeling that, look, let's bridge uh, that gap. And so they increase the airfare. They are selling. People are traveling to Kotonu, to Accra, to go and travel abroad. To London. To London. Now, let's use this London situation as a case study. Mm since we're talking about implementing profitable solutions in aviation, yeah. we saw the coming on board of airpiece, airpiece yes. to ensure that Nigerians have cheaper alternatives from Lagos yeah, to London. To London yeah. But we also saw the response the broader community gave airpiece that saw Mr. Alen Onyema coming to the media to cry that certain cabals are looking to frustrate the operations of airpiece. How do we bridge these relations in trade? So much so that we can allow indigenous airlines give Nigerians alternative to this outrageous airfares much like you've highlighted it's a tough one it was crying because it was new to the game that's what we call aero politics it happens all over the world if an airline sees that another one is trying to come into a particular route especially a lucrative route for that matter they try to do everything to frustrate you go and ask Bellevue Go and ask Medview, ask Eric Air. They have gone through the same path and they, 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 they crashed out. So these are very solid foreign carriers. They have the money to, you know, to frustrate you. So, but he has uh, uh, certain things working to his own advantage because uh, the cost of uh, production, labor, labor is cheap and all that. And again, when he came in, when the airpiece came in, it brought down the prices. All these uh, foreign carriers that were exploiting the, uh, the traveling public, they sat up because they knew it was going to you know, remove the carpet from under them. So they, you can see that at around the time the airpiece came in, that was when uh, airfare began to drop, began to drop. It was in reaction to the entry of... Uh, Airpiece because airpiece can compete very well on the uh, term of cost. The, the the airpiece cost will not be as much as that of uh, the other foreign carriers. So um, and again, Nigerians would love to fly their own uh, carrier. That's a very sensitive conversation yes. with a kind of worms waiting to be opened. Now talking yes. about a national carrier, many Nigerians don't want to even hear the mention of Nigerian Air. Following what happened 
in the last Nigerian Air Project. How do we begin to unearth these conversations in a way to probably, many would say probe first because a lot of money was sunk in that project. Yeah. But how do we find a way to bring the Nigerian Air Project on board? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I know that um, our environment, the tendency to turn projects like that into conduit pipes, they are very real. And so people are very, very suspicious too. And then they believe that the government should allow the private carriers to do the job. You give them the backing and they do the job. It is not that uh, having a national carrier owned by the government, in fact, uh, it's not an anathema. It's not something that uh, uh, should not be. Because if you look at Singapore, for example, Singapore Airlines is owned 100% by the government and is, what is the best airline in the world. It's profitable. Why? Because they run it as if they are running a private enterprise. But would that happen in Nigeria? That's a concern that a lot of people have that uh, if the government has a hand in it, um, politics, greed, personal uh, interest, and all other things may militate against its uh, very existence. So um, it's a controversial issue, and it depends on which angle from which you are looking at it. So, uh, but for me, for me, I would rather that um, uh, the government backs the private carrier and allow them to, again, the car private carriers may not have enough muzzle, especially in our own environment. The government has the muzzle to get capital for running that kind of an airline. Uh, that's the dilemma we have found ourselves. If this, the government that can do it, but the people in government, would they be sincere enough to uh, allow the airline to run and again not use it for personal interest? Interest. That's where the problem is. Now, now let's talk about some of the practicable examples we've seen following the template which you have just advised. Mm. We look at a case study in Aquibum State, okay. where the coming on board of Ibom Air has also informed more investments in the Victor Atta International Airport, yes, yes. where we see that mm -hmm. they're also making moves to have it become an international airport, okay. thereby expanding mm -hmm. international travel away yeah. from Abuja and Lagos, yeah. and to a new vista in Aquibum mm -hmm. State. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you think that this is one of the good examples that the government yeah. might look at? I I Ibom Air is a good example. Uh, I think the government there has allowed the airline to function uh, with little or no interference in the way they run their business. But you cannot guarantee that one in Nigerian environment. And uh, it depends on whoever comes into that government in the future. So is the future guaranteed? Maybe not. It depends on who comes in. If he wants to interfere, if he doesn't want uh, the people there again, he wants his own family members or friends to run the place and things like that. So that is the one problem. But if allowed to run independently, as you have said, the airport, for example, the airlines is the driver of uh, uh, airport development because they want to have more counters, they want to have more facilities, they want to have this, they want to have that, and that we you know, increase the viability of that airport and then the capacity of that airport too, you know. So it, it, it has a lot of advantage. For example, if Nigeria had a national carrier, it would have helped in developing our national international airports like Abuja, Lagos, Kano, because these airlines will need more facilities and then the the competing airlines too from other countries also we want to uh, you know accelerate development within that environment so it, 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 we are losing a lot by not having strong carriers well if you're just joining us you're on to our flagship program on adbn television and we're looking at the broad topic of implementing profitable relations in nigeria's aviation sector i'm here with a former general manager of the nigerian 
Safety Investigation Bureau, Mr. Atunji Oketumbi. Now, we'll talk about leadership and the role of leadership in this stead as well. Now, the aviation sector has a new minister yeah. in Festus Kiyamo SAN who has also taken out time to intermeet the media with some of the mandates and policies under his watch. Mm -hmm. Having listened to him, how would you rate his leadership in the one year he has been minister of the aviation in, uh, sector in Nigeria? I think he has shown a lot of enthusiasm in, in carrying out his job. Um, he has the passion you know, um, of somebody that wants to succeed, okay? Um, I, I think he needs to work more with the stakeholders, you know, because uh, when you are in that position, uh, the tendency for you to be overwhelmed by people with vested interest is very high. And so you need people who can give you contrary opinion. You need people who have stake you know, in the industry, not just because they are investors, not be just because they own airlines, but because their living livelihood is tied to that industry. So you need to listen to people from different segments of that uh, industry. I think the minister would do well to 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 you know tread that path. But uh, for somebody that is as passionate as he is, uh, the chance to succeed is very high. Uh, if he engages uh, the right channels, you know, uh, you, uh, the, the problem is not usually with the people, I mean, uh, who are ministers or whatever. I think it's the people who have vested interest. You, who everybody wants his own. Everybody wants to, uh, they will want to get things at the, at the disadvantage of the, of the society or the commonwealth. So this is very, very important uh, for him to take note of that. But I think um, uh, given all things, he has the chance to uh, succeed and uh, the earlier the better. Now when we talk issues of safety in yeah. the Nigerian airspace, mm -hmm. Nigeria is rated quite highly. I looked yeah. at the most recent a IATA reports yes. and there's been a lot of credit given to how safety is managed in Nigeria. Now unlike the most recent mm. incidents in Nepal where a lot of persons have been angered about the lack of safety procedures implemented in Nepal to forestall frequent crashes. Nigeria seems to have gotten its game in, in, in check. How did this come by? Yeah, over the years. You know, we, there was a time we had a serious problem in Nigeria too when we were having crashes all over the place and things like that. And I think that was during the time of uh, uh, President Obasanjo. And then um, he decided to take action, you know, he, he, he called the industry together and said, look, we have to put a stop to this. And so he did some reforms which yielded results. And um, especially with the empowerment of the, the Civil Aviation uh, Authority, once you have a solid Civil Aviation Authority, you are as good as uh, anything, you know. Um, we, we, that was the time they also created uh, the Accident Investigation Bureau as an autonomous body, you know. <clears throat> so the, the, the empowerment of uh, the Civil Aviation Authority uh, led to a very stable and improving uh, safety environment. And I, I think uh, uh, we have benefited a lot from that. And so that's why professionals in the industry are always uh, very sensitive to uh, any action taken by the minister or, or whoever is there at the helm of authority because anything that can compromise the authority and the autonomy of the civil aviation regulation uh, is not acceptable in the aviation industry. It's not acceptable. I, I agree with you. Mm, yeah. Now, talking the NCAA, yes. now talking about things that can, like you said, scuttle the safety we enjoy. Yeah. Now, many are looking for a way politics can be removed from allowing operations of the NCAA operate. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the challenges was following the appointment of the acting direct general yeah. of the NCAA, yeah. Captain Chris Najomo. Yeah. We saw publications. Some persons were sponsoring conversations around his acting capacity, speculating his removal, when he was just less than six months in office. And we're commending the NCAA for ensuring that we have 
a safe aviation space in Nigeria? How do Nigerians become more patriotic in, you know, divorcing politics from the operationalities of certain agencies of government? I, I think largely it has to do with um, the authority, the people in government. If you allow uh, merit, you allow um, a kind of an environment where uh, that can inspire confidence within the industry, you will have less problems. And again, that position is a political appointment. Everybody is jostling for it. Yeah, they want it. So if you give it to somebody, they will find a way of uh, moving around to scuttle that and whatever. So that one is normal. But the, what is important is for the government or the people at the helm of affairs to be focused. Is this person qualified to be there? If he's qualified to be there, no matter what anybody is saying, you don't, uh, you don't go with that, as long as he's doing the right job. So if you give, uh, you see, if the person does not have the confidence that he can hold his position, he will misbehave. But you have to give him the environment where he can take independent decisions, he can follow the rules. Look, everything in the aviation industry is governed by rules. Even to cough, in the aviation industry is governed by rules. You must follow the rules. If you don't follow the rules, then you are likely to have a, an accident. It's just that. So, politics should be uh, reduced to the barest minimum in uh, appointing the uh, the head of uh, Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority and um, also in ensuring that uh, he, I, he runs the establishment without looking over his shoulders. That's, that's a major issue. The, 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 the minister must allow whoever is the uh, the Director General of Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority Captain to do his job. Najomo in this case. Yes, I don't want to be particular about anybody. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just saying that... Uh, it should be a standard. Yes, that, is, that should be the standard. Anybody that is there, give him the free hand to run the place. So, so that um, uh, the man is not afraid of losing his job and things like that, then you, he begins to compromise. So that's the way I see it. Now, it's important that you have highlighted regulation and the role of the regulator yeah. with his autonomy as yeah. one of the key ways that our aviation space in Nigeria can be kept safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a challenge. Many would say, how do we begin to investigate it? There are citations with ticket racketeering. Okay. We hear that some ticket touts, let me for, for the lack of better yeah. Yeah. grammar, yeah. ticket touts are in the habit of scooping up available tickets and when you have passengers grappling to acquire air tickets, they now sell at even resell or retail mm. at even higher prices than what is obtainable now. Yeah. This issue of air ticket racketeering, uh, do you have any possible solutions in terms of tackling the Mines? Well, I, I think it's the, it's, uh, the NCA. If the NCA wants to tackle that, they can easily tackle that. It's just a collusion between the airline staff and this so-called tout. They, they work hand in hand. And as long as the NCA is there to fish them out and even uh, sanction the affected airline, when an airline is sanctioned, it will work out to make sure that um, uh, its staff do not uh, uh, compromise on yeah, the it, it does it. It's just a collusion uh, between uh, the airline staff and the tout. There's nothing, there's nothing there. There's nothing a tout can do. There's nothing a tout can do if the in, there's no internal collision. It's not possible for, an, uh, for a tout to know how many seats you have. If there's no inside information. If there's no inside information. So it is just the airline staff and the... And you know, most of the time, these people you, are, you call touts, are former airline staff. They are former airline staff, so they know the system. And they, they have a, uh, a kind of a partnership with the people inside. Because they work together. They, they work together, companies. yes. Most of the time that people that are sacked in the aviation industry don't go any other place. They stay there. 
when they are sacked or there's a downsize in the near line or a near line collapses, the staff will not go. They will be hanging around the airport. I, well, I think that's the only place they know anyway. So they want to stay there. And then they have to find something to do to make a living. So, now, now, we've also seen the Lagos state government at the international airport, MM1 and MM2, mm. put together more like an airport marshal to ensure that there is boots on the ground to curb such extortion of air passengers and also ticket racketeering. Is this something that's re uh, replicable across other airports in Nigeria? It's very replicable. Uh, you see, I believe that uh, if uh, uh, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria found is uh, up and doing they can also contribute to uh, largely you know reducing the touting at the airport if they don't give them the place to stay if they don't allow you you are not a staff you are not uh, doing any job here stop hanging around here they can do it i think is the weakness on the part of a fan weakness on the part of NCA and then the airlines. That's uh, where we have the problem. But I believe that uh, if everybody is, is up and doing, uh, that thing will be reduced to BRS yeah. minimum. Yeah. Now that we've addressed some of the common issues I'm mm. sure our viewing public would have, let's talk more about an issue affecting the elites in terms of okay. private jets. Okay. Now, the federal government quite recently began to clamp down on owners of private jets. Um, we heard that the reason was owing to import duties, that over 1.9 billion naira was owed in import duties by certain private aircraft owners, including a bank uh, private jet. This has become a lingering issue in the aviation sector. Oh. And many ask, is it that there is the lack of willpower to ensure that these are friends of the bourgeois, who you know, uh, unlike you say you don't know the persons who own these aircraft, it almost seems to be an elusive subject in the Nigerian aviation sector. Uh, well, for me, I think it's the problem of the elite. They know one another. They, it's their problem, actually. They are the owners of the jets. They are the policy makers. So if they are after one another, uh, if it's to our own advantage as uh, the people, well, we, we salute them for having the courage to pounce on one another, you know. Uh, but I think, yes, maybe because there's a new management in the, the customs, uh, trying to say, oh, we have lost a lot of money, you know, to Paddy Paddy and things like that, and they want to recover that. Fine, there's no problem about that. It's just um, uh, the right thing should be done. It's just because we, we either we don't have a standard or we are not following the standard. Once there is a standard, everybody falls into it. This is the rule, and you enforce the rule. There will be no problem. But where we do not enforce the rule, or we allow, you know, Nigerians, and anywhere in the world anyway, people will try to uh, circumvent uh, a system. It is the enforcers of that system that will not allow anybody to circumvent it. Let's talk about even a more practical one that Nigerians yeah. will remember. The House of Reps deliberated on the payment of uh, access tickets okay. at airports. And we heard that certain concessions that were given to high-ranking government officials were removed. Every Nigerian is mandated to pay access entry into the airports. And this came from the legislative chambers who, you know, many would say many of them were the ones enjoying this freeway before. Well, do they themselves, do they want to pay when they get to the toll gates? I mean, I mean the 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 uh, uh, the legislators. Do they want to pay? Uh, some of these things are not realistic. Uh, I think uh, sometimes we also try to play to the gallery, but the the real issue is not even with the people that are not paying, but the corruption in the system of collection. And even in remittance. That's what I'm saying. That's the system. That's the one you should focus more on than uh, they say the, pres the president should pay two gates. How will the president pay two gates? Who is the person that will stand to block the, to convoy. Block the convoy of the president coming say, no, you have to pay. 
uh, how many times does the president pass through the the toll gate? That one is just a, I think it's just a publicity uh, stunt. You know, it's it's nothing. If the president uh, pays or not, that one does not amount to anything. If you collect your revenue faithfully and legitimately, you don't need all these uh, run around for nothing. Now, there's an adage my people use. They say a house that is kept in order is more of an invitation to visitors. Yes. Now, the way Nigerians have been perceived by the broader flying communities, Ethiopia, the UAE, who had stripped Nigerians of visa on arrival and e-visas, have become very worrisome. Now, many have called on the stakeholders in the aviation industry to be able to make a case for Nigerians. These issues on visa, visa on arrival and e-visa, is there a better way to foster a relationship so that Nigerians enjoy some of these privileges that other Africans, let's not even talk about people from other parts of the world, yeah. other Africans, South Africans enjoy when they visit Ethiopia or the UAE? Uh, to me, I, I don't think it falls within the uh, purview of um, the aviation industry. This is a job by the minister, uh, uh, foreign affairs minister. Minister. you know. You, you do, your foreign policy must be based on the interest of your country. You make sure that any country that is taking punitive uh, actions against your own citizens, that you find a way to bring them to the table and also show them. You know, if, uh, for example, they say, oh, we strip you of this, strip you of that, there are other ways that you also can retaliate. Retaliation is an acceptable uh, standard in the foreign, foreign diplomacy. Yes, yeah, diplomacy. Well. So it is the job of the federal government, the, the job of uh, uh, the, the foreign affairs ministry to take action and make sure that uh, your citizens are not treated uh, anyhow. If you say this is what you want to do to us, okay, you look for an area where you can hit them too. And then you tell them that we also may, may ought to like to withdraw from this area. So it's not um, it's not something that uh, we should be debating. If we have a policy at the foreign affairs level, at the diplomatic level, that if you treat us like this, this is what we will do. If you do this, this is what we will do. So once you do that. Uh, aviation is just to provide the uh, services. Services. Now, talking about some of this diplomacy, we've seen some, I don't want to use the word controversial, okay. but we've seen some back and forth mm -hmm. in terms of positions in regarding relationships with the UAE, especially with the Dubai visa issue as well, the federal government making efforts, also visiting to foster dialogue and relationship. But in terms of publication, there's always a publication and then a counter publication of the position of the government and Dubai in terms of where we stand in reaching the agreement. Uh, do you think that this can be better managed? Yes, yeah, it can be better managed. Uh, I think the government of UAE is also playing some pranks on us. And I think the major problem we have is that our elites have made uh, uh, Dubai a travel even, destination. Yes. <laughs> so they have investment there, they have all this there. But we know that a lot of Nigerians are traders, you know, and they go to that place and they transit through the place and all that stuff. And so they are using our own weakness to hold us. And so we also need to use what can be there. And, uh, and I think that affected them because the Emirates could not come here and it's a big market for them. It's a very big market for any foreign carrier, you know. And now that they, they say they have lifted the ban on uh, visas, then they have introduced another thing that is more or less like uh, not lifting it, saying you have to pay 640,000 naira for verification apart from visa fee and all that, and, you know, then you must have a certain balance of uh, uh, probably about 10,000, equivalent of about $10,000 in your account and things like that. How many people can have that? You know, so I think it is a, an area where the government needs to engage the government of Dubai or UAE in very serious talk, frank talk. You know, uh, but like I said, uh, the fact that um, the ruling class in Nigeria 
has an uh, enormous investment in that country uh, will not make them to also, you know, act the way they should act. I mean, that's my opinion. Now, you've made very interesting recommendations through the course of our discussion this morning. But in summary, some of the key recommendations or into your previous role in the industry and who knows, future appointments coming on the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's have some key recommendations of the government of the day in line with what you envision for Nigerian's aviation sector. Yeah, I think the government needs to sit down with the stakeholders and do um, a kind of a, a vision uh, statement. Uh, what I mean by vision statement is like, even during Abasha time, we did vision 2010. You know, you, when you can look for 10 years uh, projection. Plan. Yes, projection. This is what we want to do. Where are we coming from? Where do we want to go to? How do we get there? You know, all these things can be done. And you can say, okay, this is your strength. These are the uh, critical things that we can do within the next five years, within the next 10 years. So we now sit down and collect all these things and begin to work on a deliberate plan. Not that we do things the way they come. There's no country in the world that doesn't plan is aviation that there are any successful aviation industry you have seen in the world is based on a careful planning you know so everybody is working towards that one to achieving it so whether a government comes a government goes there is a template that is already there any one that is coming in we just try to work on that uh, template and see how to you know generate more results so I think that is a. I think that's one thing we need to do, and of course, capital is a very serious issue in the aviation industry. How the government can mobilize resources to ensure that um, the industry has access to capital, to capital is a very, very clear. And it, it, the dividends will come to the economy. The dividends will come to the generality of Nigerians. This industry has the capacity you know, to employ hundreds of thousands of people. It will, it will interest you to know that uh, uh, Asfield International Airport in uh, Atlanta, you know, employs uh, over 100,000 people, just one airport. You know, both direct and indirect uh, employment. Uh, employment. So is a thing that can be done here. And if, we, if uh, uh, Nigeria becomes a hub, you generate more employment, generate more, generate more uh, activities, economic activities around the airport. We have not really utilized our airports the way we should utilize them. Well, I must thank you, Mr. Tunji, for this thank salient you, recommendations. I'm sure that they are listening and they will take a lead mm -hmm. from it. We appreciate you. Yeah.